All right, biology students, we are moving along in our energetics unit. This is lesson two. So today we are focusing on photosynthesis, which is probably not new to you. You probably have heard of photosynthesis before, talked about it um, in previous science classes. Um, but we're going to dig in a little deeper. We're actually going to talk about the process of photosynthesis. Some of the information you have heard of before and some will be new. Um, but just a reminder, the ultimate source of energy for most ecosystems anyway is the sun. Um, and that energy must be converted from light energy into something usable by these organisms um, that we refer to as autotrophs. Um, so they're going to have to convert that light energy into chemical energy. And the way that occurs is through a process known as photosynthesis. So if we take photosynthesis, the word, and we break it down, um, photo means light. If you synthesize something, you make it. And so in photosynthesis, we have organisms that are going to use a lot to make energy for themselves. Now, photosynthesis to this point anyway has been pretty straightforward. So what you probably have learned is that light shines on a plant. That plant gets some water. We add carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and through that process of photosynthesis, the plant's going to give off some oxygen and then create some simple sugars such as glucose. Um, but you know, the actual process is a lot more complex, so we're going to get into that process today. Now, we typically think of plants as the only organisms that do photosynthesis, uh, but they're not the only ones. So plants, of course, uh, are autotrophs. They do make their own food through photosynthesis, but we also have algae. Um, we have phytoplankton, which is the basis of ocean food webs. We have some bacteria known as cyanobacteria that are also photosynthetic. So there's a lot more autotrophs than just plants. Now, it's important to remember from Unit 2 when we talked about plant cells in plants and protists, photosynthesis is going to happen in the chloroplast. So that's an organelle in the plant cell. And that chloroplast contains chlorophyll, which we learned in Unit 2 is a pigment that absorbs, helps the plant absorb light energy. And then, of course, that light energy is going to be converted into um, uh, stuff that the plant can use. We'll get into that in just a second. I'll show you an equation. Um, but it's important to also know sort of the anatomy of the chloroplast. So let's take a look at that. So the two main parts of the chloroplast are the thylakoid um, or the thylakoids and the stroma. So I like to think of the, the thylakoids remind me of pancakes, um, but they are coin shaped membranes that contain the chlorophyll. And these are important, these thylakoids, because they are going to be the location of a process that we're going to talk about in just a second, a part of photosynthesis called the light dependent reactions. Um, now, if we take a, a bunch of thylakoids and stack them together, we can refer to the whole stack as granum. Or if we're talking about multiple stacks, we call it grana. Um, so thylakoids are like the individual pancakes, and then if we have a stack of pancakes, we call that the granum. And if we're talking about like all three of these stacks in the picture, that's referred to as the grana. Uh, and then you can also have the stroma. So the stroma in the, on the screen is this yellow colored fluid that surrounds the thylakoids. And the stroma is going to be important because we're going to talk about another process of photosynthesis that's called the light independent reactions. And this is where that process takes place. Now, photosynthesis, um, before we jump into um, the different stages of photosynthesis, it's important that we talk chemistry a little bit. So photosynthesis is a chemical reaction. And if you remember from physical science, photosynthesis or any chemical reaction can be summarized by an equation. So you can have a chemical equation um, that contains formulas like you see on the screen. So you can have sunlight and then CO2, which is carbon dioxide. Um, and then H2O, which is water. So all those things are called reactants. They come together and that's going to yield us or produce us C6H12O6, which is sugar or glucose, um, and then oxygen gas, which is O2. You can also use a word equation to describe photosynthesis. So in a word equation, we would have light energy um, mixed with some carbon dioxide, mixed with some water. All of those reactants would produce products known as glucose and oxygen. So there's different ways that equations like photosynthesis can be described. You need to make sure that you could read 
um, a picture equation, a word equation, or a formula equation. So I put all three here on the screen. Um, the other thing that you need to know about photosynthesis is what are the reactants? What are the products? I'm pretty sure that's going to be a quiz question or a test question. So make sure that you get that down in your notes. Um, so reactants of photosynthesis, fine energy, carbon dioxide, and water. And then our products, that's what's made in a chemical reaction. Um, that's going to be our glucose and our oxygen. If you're a visual person, here you go. All right, so we have sunlight that's going to enter um, and help kickstart what we're going to learn in just a second is the light independent reaction, um, excuse me, the light dependent reaction. And then you have carbon dioxide that's going to enter the plants through pores in the leaf called the stomata. Um, and there's a graphic organizer that we're going to do in a future lesson where we actually take a look at the stomata. Um, but the stomata is like the entry point for carbon dioxide and the exit point for oxygen. So the plant takes in sunlight, carbon dioxide, and then, of course, we know the plant needs water. Um, that kickstarts photosynthesis, and then we're going to have oxygen that's going to be produced, and then also glucose is going to be made. All right, now we're going to get into the part that might be new to you. So there are two stages of photosynthesis. Um, the first stage is the light dependent reactions, and it's exactly what it sounds like it would be like. This part of the um, process of photosynthesis needs light to happen. That's why it's called the light dependent reaction. Uh, and then you have stage two, the light independent reactions. Now this stage is also called the Calvin cycle, um, but it doesn't necessarily need light. It just takes what was created from the light dependent reaction uh, and mixes it with some other molecules um, to get the job done. And we'll talk about the ins and outs of what that job is. All right, so let's start with the light dependent reactions. This is step one of photosynthesis. If you need to pause the video to get this information down, do so. Um, this is a very complicated process and your teacher might have you dig into this process a little more in depth, depending on what sort of course you're taking. Um, but for basic biology, this is what you need to know. So where does the light dependent reaction, this first step of photosynthesis, where does it take place? Well, it takes place in the thylakoids of the chloroplast. Um, and basically what's going to happen is sunlight's going to come in. It's going to strike the thylakoids. There are electrons in there in the chlorophyll that's going to get really excited. Um, and those electrons are going to flow into the thylakoid membrane it starts something known as the electron transport chain. And then with the help of some enzymes, the water that is put into photosynthesis will be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. And then that oxygen is going to be released as waste. So you can see here what goes in, sunlight and water. Um, and during the light dependent reaction, that water is going to break into hydrogen and oxygen. And then the oxygen comes out as a byproduct or waste product and it's actually going to leave or exit the plant. Now something that's also produced during the light dependent reactions is uh, some molecules known as NADPH um, and then also ATP. So ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It's an energy molecule. Um, so both ATP and NADPH are going to be produced, but they're not going to exit the plant. They're going to actually move into the second stage of photosynthesis. So they'll actually go into the light independent reaction to help fuel that whole process. So in a nutshell, basically chlorophyll is going to absorb energy from the sun. It's going to be transferred to ATP and NADPH. Those two molecules are going to move into stage two, which we'll talk about in just a second. And water is going to be split into oxygen and hydrogen, and that oxygen is released. All right, then we move into stage two, which is light independent reaction. Um, this is also known as the Calvin cycle, named after the scientists who helped sort of discover um, the different processes of photosynthesis. So where does this process occur? It occurs in the stroma. So if you remember a few slides back, we talked about the stroma as being like that fluid field um, area of the chloroplast that surrounds the thylakoids. So this process happens there. 
And in this process, it's a lot more complicated than this, but we're just getting the quick and dirty here. So what goes in? Carbon dioxide. And remember that ATP and NADPH from the light dependent reaction is going to come into play. Um, and then what is produced? Glucose. So this is where our glucose is made or our sugar is made. And then we're also going to get some ADP. So we had adenosine triphosphate in the light dependent reactions, but we have lost a phosphate now and we're down to ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. We're also going to have the molecule NADP plus, um, which I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail there. Again, if your teacher wants you to go into more detail, um, that'll be a future lesson. But for now, you just need to know those two molecules that are produced during the light independent reactions. They are actually going to move into the light dependent reaction and this kickstarts the whole cycle. So photosynthesis is a cycle and those energy carrying molecules like ATP, ADP, NADPH and NAD plus, they help fuel each other in a cycle. Um, so if you just want the summary version of what happens in the light independent reaction, carbon dioxide and energy from the light dependent reaction, um, and the ATP molecule and NADPH molecules are going to be used to make glucose. So glucose is given off as a byproduct in the Calvin cycle. Now, I'm a picture person, and if you are too, and those words confused you, no worries. Just kind of, I'm going to give you a breakdown here as a visual representation. And I think for a lot of you, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. It's not as complicated um, as it seems. So again, this is the whole process of photosynthesis. It happens in two stages. You can see here we have the light dependent reactions, that's stage one, and then the light independent reactions, that's stage two. So in step one, this is gonna take place in the thylakoids. Um, and what's going to happen is energy from the sun is going to enter the thylakoids. We also have some water, so this is why plants need water. And those two uh, reactants are going to help produce oxygen. So at this point, we have oxygen gas. And remember, you also have ATP and NADPH that are going to be produced. But they're not going to leave as byproducts. They're actually going to power the light independent reactions. All right, so now we've entered stage two, uh, and this is where the reactant carbon dioxide comes into play. So it will join in the light independent reaction. It'll join in with ATP and NADPH, kickstarts that whole process, and then um, glucose is going to be created as a byproduct. And then NAD plus and ADP are going to be created, and they are going to move into the light dependent reaction to fuel the whole process over again. So you can see this is a cycle that just keeps going and going and going. Um, but you can see here an overview of photosynthesis as a whole. Sunlight plus water plus carbon dioxide will yield us oxygen and glucose. So that is photosynthesis. I will see you in the next lesson where we will talk about cellular respiration.